What is up you guys? My name is Dennis and welcome to Playbook. So for this movie review, medyo magtatagalog na lang ako dahil Filipino film naman pinag-uusapan natin. Pero yung mga technical stuff, siguro explain ko sa English. Pero i-try ko pa rin yung Tagalog kasi medyo mahirap i-explain ang screenplay or direction sa Tagalog. Anyway, for this video, we're gonna talk about the film Glorious. Glorious is a film that was recently released in i1 TV and it has blown the internet with its overtly sexual trailers. So I decided to watch it. And then when I watched it, I expected for a Fifty Shades of Grey type of film because of its overtly sexual material. But that was just an impression. I was actually very surprised that the film is deeper than that. Because I get it, like sexuality is an easy sell when you're trying to market a film. When I first saw the film, it wasn't just about the sexual elements of the relationship between Tony Labrusca and Angel Lavino. It was a woman's journey going through the turmoils and difficulties of midlife crises. It was a woman going through her 50s. And hindi lang siya basta basta sex or relationship ng isang mas nakakatanda sa mas nakakabada. The relationship between Tony Labrusca and Angel Lavino actually came in secondary. Because it was all about Angel Lavino's perspective. It was a woman's perspective in life. So the relationship was just one of the elements, one of the accessories. It was also about career, it was also about family and love in general. But it wasn't just about sexual tension and aggressiveness and physicality. So if you're expecting a film that is all about sex, just watch porn. Or just watch Fifty Shades of Grey, but that's a bad movie. So just watch porn. Because this film is actually deeper than that. This has more substance, this has more story, and I find it very surprising in a very good way. There is a palpable difference between the generations that Angel Aquino and Tony Labrusca represent. Angel Aquino, given that she is already in her 50s, has a different perspective in life. Iba yung paningin niya sa family niya, iba yung tingin niya sa, sa career. Career is like her salvation. If my career is dead, I'm dead. That's what she sees. And yung family naman niya, given that she has given almost half of her life raising her family. Ang perspective niya, it was all about, it's my time now. It's my time to find my happiness, to find what I really am made of. It's, it's my time to shine. Parang ganun. Whereas si Tony Labrusca, he represented a generation that is very familiar to us. We've been there just recently. That age bracket of 20 to 25. It was all about experimenting in life. Mas na-establish pa sa character niya na mas clingy pa siya sa family niya. Kasi, 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 <laughs> kasi he's still in his 20s. So, hindi pa siya masyado nakakapag-let go. Hindi pa siya ganun ka-independent. He's still immature. He still needs his family for validation in life. Even with sexuality. Tony Labrusca's definition of love is through physicality. Whereas, Angel Aquino, she doesn't really care about physicality. She doesn't really care about sex too much. She just needed intimacy. And sexuality and intimacy are two completely different things. They define that really, really well. Angel Aquino, I think, did a very, very great job portraying her character. Kasi mahirap yung character niya. Isipin niyo sabay-sabay niyang pinapakita sa mukha niya yung mga emotions na natatakot siya, naglolong siya, excited siya, nalilibugan siya. And at the same time, lahat effortless. As in, as in... As in, isipin nyo lahat ng yun, sabay-sabay na nag, nang, nangyayari sa mukha niya. You need to be a, a very, very great actress for you to pull that off. Tony Labrusca, on the other hand, um, like I said, he represented a very, very specific age bracket, 20 to 25. I think he pulled off the hayok part pretty well. Because when you're young, it was all about being impulsive and being immature. But at the same time, I find this character quite one-dimensional because yun lang yung nakita ko sa character niya. Hayok lang siya, na immature. Where in that age bracket, that specific age bracket of 20 to 25, there is a multifaceted emotions and stages and layers to it. Na hindi lang naman yung obvious na pagiging immature or pagiging overly sexual yung meron sa age bracket na yun. There's so much things that I wish I've seen, pero hindi na ipakita. But I'm not saying he did a bad job. It's just that medyo... Medyo kulang. And speaking of screenplay, for me, yung movie, nahati siya sa dalawang stages ng, ng script. 
the first part, I find, sorry, pero I find it very tacky. Um, medyo soap opera-ish yung atake. Everything was, everything was, everything was cheesy. Like, it played a lot on stereotypes on a Filipino husband and a Filipino wife in their midlife. It played the stereotype on kung paano yung teenagers and how they handle love and relationships and their family. Uh, masyado siyang cheesy para sa akin yung first half. But the second half, dun na na-unravel yung substance talaga ng movie that it was a journey of a woman uh, going through this particular period of her life. So, I wish ganun din yung first half ng film. Ang lalim bigla nung act 2. And act 1 felt like a badly written soap opera. Sorry. Ah, and especially Alan Paulus' character. I actually felt bad for Alan Paulus because he's a really great actor. Yung lines niya, yung character niya as a whole, it was very, it was very stereotypical, irresponsible husband trying to beat her wife for being incompetent. Walang substance, it was very one-dimensional. And, wala, there's nothing to him. Maganda sana yung gawan ng arc yung character niya as a contrast kung papaano ba ang isang husband in his midlife compared to a lover in his younger years. Maganda sana gawa ng contrast yung dalawang generations na yun as lovers. They just played the obvious typecasted role of a husband towards a wife kind of thing. And I don't think it's quite good. The cinematography was actually very pristine. Maganda yung shots. Maganda kung paano si Nokes yung Cordillera, Baguio City, and the, the other provinces up north. But I feel like it's quite irrelevant with the film. It's like a commercial for a tourism destination. It was it felt out of place to the, to the entire narrative. Parang kinuhaan lang for the sake na makuhaan kasi maganda siya. But I don't think it played a role to the entire arc of the story. But it was good. Like it was it was beautifully shot. It's almost as if the cinematography is too invasive to the story of the two lovers. Somehow, it's too beautiful that it's distracting. Parang na-highlight siya masyado sa tourism ad aspect of the film. Another thing, this is tactical though, um, the editing was a bit inconsistent. May mga parts sa movie na sobrang haphazard ng editing, may parts naman na sobrang ganda. May mga parts na parang sobrang suave, it, it felt like a music video almost. Sobrang snappy, sobrang swift ng transitions. And then may mga parts na parang vlog lang yung video. <laughs> sobrang abrupt yung mga transitions, sobrang, sobrang chunky nung mga exit na it wasn't smooth, it was rough. Pero may mga, may mga parts naman na suave, may parts na maganda. I, felt, I just felt the inconsistency. Overall, female representation of midlife crisis is very very rare in cinema as a whole. So it's very refreshing na merong ganitong uri ng pelikula na makakapag-showcase nun. Kasi sobrang bihira natin makita yung mga ganong uri ng pelikula. And I think Angel Aquino is the true hero of the film. Because she represented something that could easily go cheesy or could easily go corny. But she did it with finesse, she did it with effortlessness, and she did it with beauty. I don't think any actress can pull that off. She was born to do this role, Angel Aquino. And also kudos to the director and writer of the film because a film like this take, would take balls for it to be made because it's very controversial. It's very it's very brave for the storyteller to actually go on and do this film because this is a topic that could easily go bad <laughs> if not told well because this is considered by some people as taboo but it was told in a story that was very concentrated on feminism, on woman empowerment. So I think it was very brave for the writer-director of the movie to tell this story in a very genuine, in a very honest kind of way. Overall, down to the nitty-gritty, um, Glorious wasn't a perfect film. It has its own flaws. But at the same time, it showed something that is very real and very honest and I think that is very important in a story to be that raw, to be that organic. And it was told in this movie pretty well. Do I recommend this movie? Yes, I actually do. You might actually be surprised as much as I was. Because it was very far from what I expected, but in a good way. You just go to i one TV. It's free, guys. Free na yun. Wala na kayong babayanan. You just need to watch it. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe, please, to my channel below. Subscribe na kayo. I'll see you soon.